lab code agents once again thank you for joining us we've got jeff and renee thanks for being with us jeff and then obviously dan corko we're co-hosting this one dan is the ceo of follow up boss look at his awesome hat dude when are you sending that out to everybody watching this is actually there's only one of these hats right now i got it as like a secret santa gift one year what? so Dude, uh, check this we out. We got tons of mugs. Yeah, if you guys sign up, you can get a, a mug. Uh, I gotta say, Dan and Follow Up Boss gives the best swag ever. High quality swag right there. We use that swag. Dude, I'm loving this. I, I just drank, uh, <laughs> I have like four of these and I'm always using them up. I gave one away to one of my team members, but anyways, let's get started. We're gonna be talking about thriving remotely. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful topic right now. It's one that, that a lot of people are trying to figure out still. And so why not bring in Dan from Follow Up Boss and, and Jeff and Renee. I know you guys are, are thriving remotely very well. And let's get right into it. Jeff and Renee, can you just introduce yourselves to those people that are watching? Absolutely. So I'm Renee Funk with the Funk Collection brokered by EXP Realty. And this is my sidekick. Yep, Jeff Funk <laughs> with Funk Collection brokered by EXP Realty. We um, have had, just for context, we have been team leaders of the Fun Collection for a little over three years now, probably closing in on almost four. We have had an unbelievable trajectory of growth over the last three to four years, of which uh, almost three years of that has been a remote accessible business model. And just to go on a little bit of our team structures, uh, we are the team leaders. We have a transaction coordinator, we have a team assistant, and we have um, 14 agents on our team. We, in 2019, became the proud sponsors of the Orlando Magic, Jeff and I did. So that's a pretty epic year we've had and just been really thriving in our business. And we have a first call agent. Yes, and a first call agent, mm -hmm. yep. Nice. I love it. And then your whole team is running off of follow-up boss. Is that how it's working? We are running off follow-up boss. Yes, sir. We've been uh, running off of follow-up boss from when we first met in Chicago. So uh, oh, back nice. five years now, we um, we met with the, uh, I guess it was the nice? our ages were kind of saying, hey, follow-up boss. That's right. <laughs> so we all were in the same room together at an rew conference in chicago and so that is when jeff and i hopped on board and partnered with follow-up boss we've been with follow-up boss ever since and quite frankly when you're looking at the success of any organization it's all about the partners and the people in which are in your circle that can help you elevate your business and follow -up boss has been with us for all of these years helping us grow our business Absolutely. all right i have a question for you guys and it's in regards to the tools that you're using right now, including follow up boss. I just want you to kind of name them out. So I know, and the audience knows what you're using really to work remotely. What, what are the first things that come to mind? Well, the biggest thing is that in uh, January, 2018, we started meeting with our team five days a week, remote okay. accessible through EXP world, which is provided to our company from our brokerage. Verbella um, is the platform. So we meet with nearly 100% attendance five days a week. Um, we uh, rely very heavily on EXP World. That's been our training and our collaboration tool. We also love and have found huge success with work, uh, Workplace by Facebook. Uh, so we have found those two, right, as far as the remote accessibility component have been game changers for us. And then once you bring in follow a boss and that gives us the team interconnectivity as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right. So with workplace, what's the cost of workplace? What are you guys paying per user? Zero. All right. Yeah, it's provided for us. Um, but I believe you can set up a workplace account for your domain at a very minimal of no cost. Yeah, ours is still free. I know some agents yeah. are paying for it. Some companies are paying for it. I know uh, Century 21 uses that as a whole background for their whole uh, uh, masses of agents. And they got 130,000 agents. So they use that on the back end. Yeah, I, I love it. We, we love it. You know, one of the things that all team leaders and brokerages all face is adoption, right? The adoption of the technologies. We can have all the tools in the world, which we're grateful that we have so many technological advancements, 
But if we can't get the adoption, we can't get the agents to fully plug into the power, then that's where you're gonna see cultural disadvantages of the health of the culture in your business. And you're going to see disadvantages as far as the collaboration. So one of the awesome things about, you know, follow a boss, and if we think about workplace and these types of platforms that have such ease of usability is the learning curve is either next to nothing or there is no learning curve. And so that's how you get the adoption. And it's really getting the information that they need on these platforms so they're we're kind of forcing them to go in there and once they start going in there they get used to it it becomes second nature where we'll get a lot of people from our team asking us questions and we'll say ask it in the workplace so everybody can now get the answer it's not just going to one person we're able to feed the masses on that all right that makes sense so I know Dan and I are going to alternate here with some questions. Dan, I'm going to go ahead and ask your first official question, and then you can jump in. We actually prepared Jeff and Renee, so be prepared. Uh, all right, so the number one question here on, on working remotely, uh, how has working remotely improved your business, or hasn't it, right? Is this for Dan or is this for us? That's for <laughs> Jeff and Renee. Uh, I'm just saying Dan and I actually prepare these questions. Okay. <laughs> so it's going for you, Jeff or Renee, whoever wants to take it on first. Um, it, it hasn't been that big of a change for us. We do run a brick and mortar office. So the biggest thing we really needed to do was to get our admins and a couple staff members' computers back at their home. And then we changed our, we have, we do, like Renee said, we meet four days a week in the cloud-based environment. And then we typically would meet one day in the work, in, uh, in, in the belly. office, yeah, belly to belly. And now we just shifted that, so we're meeting five days in the cloud. So that part hasn't been that much. And having the systems and tools already in place where we were already using Workplace by Facebook, it's been very seamless for us, really. I, All right. What I've noticed is has been a huge difference in in what we're doing when we wake up every day. Is May it was March twelfth, not May twelfth. March twelfth was kind of the day for us here in Florida. We're in Orlando, Florida. We've been deemed essential um, throughout the entire pandemic, but we wake up on March twelfth and we say, "Well, the world is changing," as many of us did, perhaps on different days. What we didn't have to wake up and face is, how do we build a training program online? How do we give remote accessibility to the internal components of our business? We didn't have to do that. That has already been in place for almost three years now. What Jeff and I did is wake up and say, we're going to have to pivot real quick to make sure that we can provide remote accessibility to the consumer and the customers and prepare the agents to, to work together in that remote way, both internally and externally which was a really interesting segue in the business. Mm, I, I love that. And I think, you know, both Dan and I having exposure to so many agents, I think that actually that what you said was, was a realization for a lot of agents because believe it or not, the, the sales verticals, out of all the sales verticals out there, the real estate agents are the most uh, techie, right? And this is, a, this is for me talking to Facebook Weekly they say, hey, look, we talked to the, the car sales vertical, the restaurant vertical, the this and that vertical, and you guys seem, just seem to be the most techie. So I find that no matter what brokerage I was talking to, whether it's EXP or Keller Williams or another one, they, they had that part down. They were already communicating with each other in, in such a great way, whether it was like through your world, the EXP world, or whether it's through Keller Williams back end as well. They had that down. It was just transferring it over to the consumer. How are we going to communicate with them? And how are we going to up our presence to our agents if we're on a team, right? Or right. if we run a brokerage or whatever we run. So I love that. Dan, anything? Yeah, I was curious about the daily meetings. Um, Cause like we sort of have like a range of customers, you know, clients who are sort of, some of them are meeting daily, some of them are meeting weekly, some of them are meeting less than weekly. And so I'm just curious, like tactically what you guys are doing to sort of like, what are you covering in those meetings? How long do they go for generally? And like, maybe like, what could other people do to like get more engagement from their agents, you know, in meetings? I'm glad you're asking Dan. And that's a really important question because as I mentioned before, we adopted the morning huddles and the daily meetings 
uh, January of 2018 and saw an immediate transition in our business. In fact, in that, in that year of 2018, we grew um, with nine agents from 20 million in production to 50 million in production. And we attribute much of that growth to the shift we saw in our collaboration and in the culture. It was ironic to us that now that we were able to provide a remote accessible way to get together every day, we had nearly 100% attendance. So what we would do is we would um, come together. We still do it to this day. It's three questions. What challenges have you had? What successes have you had? And how can we help each other? 8.45 a.m. to 9 a.m. It's rapid fire, quick succession of this is what's going on, state of the union, and then you, you set your intentions, you're good for the day, and you move on to your phone calls and serving your customers. I just want to say, Tristan, you had mentioned about, you know, real estate being tech savvy. So I, I do find there are groups within real estate that have been tech savvy, but I want to share something that recently just transpired. So um, I do a show with a friend of mine, Elizabeth Riley. It's called Leadership from the Heart Series. And recently, one of the interviews nice. that we had was interviewing Margie Grant, who is the CEO of Florida Realtors. Mm -hmm. And Margie shared with us, this was about two weeks ago, that the first three weeks of quarantine in Florida, the number one incoming phone call on the Florida hotline for realtors was how do I operate Zoom? <laughs> That's very true. That is very true. I found that to be kind of alarming actually. And I found it to be very kind of poignant to the fact that I, you know, I'm glad the realtors are coming together to adopt these remote accessibilities because I know that that will improve the service that we're providing to the consumer, which in turn should improve the way the consumer views our industry. Because quite frankly, asking the question, how do I operate Zoom, shouldn't really be the number one question that realtors are asking, right? I just found that to be something kind of worth really kind of paying attention to. Yeah. Um, to piggyback okay. on talking about the morning meetings, they are they run 15 minutes. We meet at 8:45 to 9 o'clock. They're quick in out. We adopted this from uh, from just, Justin CB and Keller Williams in Atlanta. We went to a couple of his meetings and really found the value in there and decided to do that. And it, I think our agents really do love it. And when we say we get nearly 100% attendance, we pretty much get 100% attendance every day. I love that. Awesome. I love that. Good, good answer. As far as frequency, I think it's really important now that everyone's faced with remote accessibility and even as we navigate it and hopefully progress to some kind of different normal, right? Leaders have to be in front of and with and present their agents and their, the people in their organization as much as possible. Like I had a conversation recently with some leaders from our children's school and I said, look, operating remotely is not a new philosophy for us here. The thing leaders have to do is you have to get in front of the camera, you have to be available every morning, and you have to kind of put your neck out there to make sure that you are pouring into that culture. And that has what has really nurtured the culture on our team and in our business. Yeah, I love that. I think we've seen that across the board with, with great teams or great leadership where they took it upon themselves to say, hey, guys, we're meeting every day now. And, and it's just, I love that because it's a beautiful trend to continue after too. Because yeah. remember how hard it was sometimes to bring people together every day? They're like, why? But now it's like, they're not even questioning it. It's just happening. So, so I, I love that. Rita says, not certain why the calls about Zoom from agents were surprising. Uh, Rita, I think, and you know what? Let me have Renee answer that first and then I'll add to it. Renee, why was that surprising for you? It was surprising for me because I think it's indicative of how there's a lack of technological advancement in the real estate community and a lack of adoption to technological advancement. Take a look at any MLS feed and take a look at it's 2020. Let's mark it like the year we live in, as Gary Vee says, and let's focus on probably not using this to take listing photos. So I see a direct correlation to that as if if realtors woke up and said, I have to figure out now for the first time how to use a video conferencing tool, I think that shows weakness in a part of our environment as an industry that I have high hopes that the adoption is now out of necessity. So what I am hoping is that then the whole industry will set a new standard so that the customer wins out of this because we shouldn't be focused on how do I operate video conferencing. Yeah. Got it. So, yeah, I was going to say something similar with that. It was, it's surprising. So 
I saw that trend the first day. I was like, okay, I'm making a video on this. So I made a, a YouTube video on it, showed everybody how to use it. And it's like one of the most viewed videos that I've had on YouTube. And it's still there and people are asking, I guess, oh, just watch this. So I think it, it's surprising only because I thought two, two different things here. One is, well, I think the focus shouldn't be on learning just how to use Zoom. The focus should be on how do I, how do I shift my business as a whole and start approaching this differently. It doesn't just come down to just one tool or tech. So that was surprising. Right. Um, and I think, I know that's what you meant. And so the other part is, okay, Zoom, I understand a lot of agents aren't normally using this for their business. And it's because people like Jeff and Renee and Dan and I, we live in that world continually because we're providing education for real estate agents, right? And we're, we're moving the needle when it comes to leadership and technology in the industry. So I understood that part. It's like, got it. They're not, they haven't been using it. And I think the cool thing is, Rita, to answer this question more, is that the cool thing is now that they are jumping on board, I think we're going to come out of this as an industry even more tech-oriented and tech-forward because we're adapting so much technology quicker. And so that's, yeah. that's a cool thing. Uh, Dan, you have any, any comments on that one, my friend? Uh, yeah, I think just, you know, keeping the consumer experience kind of like what Renee was getting at, like now it can actually be more convenient for everyone because maybe, maybe someone's at work and, you know, their partner is at a different workplace. And now maybe you guys can meet for 20 minutes on Zoom, you know, to, to go through something you maybe before you would have the schedule in person. So I kind of think there is going to be benefits even after this happens where, you know, those kinds of tools can save you a lot of time. Like now you're not driving half an hour to go meet those clients. You're getting that half an hour back and it's more convenient for them as well. That's so, well, that's so cool that, that you bring that up. We interviewed, um, we call them uh, legends of the industry, right? And they were all female yesterday, which was super cool, by the way. And that we had four women on and combined, they had two, two billion in volume last year, which is insane, oh right? That's great. And one of them from New York said that now in order to show any property, they need to like even pre-qualify way more, right? Like, hey, yeah. are they sick, right? Do they have a fever? Are they coughing? <laughs> are they pre-approved? How are they pre-approved? Who are they? What are they looking for? And the cool thing is on the other end now, the buyers, agents and the buyers are like, yeah, cool. We understand. Here's everything. Right. And so we're hoping that that actually sticks because it'll make our life easier. Can you imagine pre-qualifying and being okay on both ends to say, Tristan, yeah, it's actually right. going to make the whole service level though, more efficient. So I agree it's on the agent side, but don't you think it's on the consumer side as well? The yeah. customer experience will have efficiencies. What we're finding right now is the agents are starting. We're having more agents do the 360 tours, doing videos on the property. So the customers are watching all these. They're much deeper in the pipeline by the time they are coming to look at a property. And we, in addition to asking, them, hey, is anybody sick? We're asking them, have they seen the 360 tour? Did they see the video? So they understand what the house is. Can we now get this industry from where agents are showing, you know, 15, 20 properties to maybe they're showing four or five? Because people understand they're looking at all yeah. All the data now. And that's, that's data so I think we should be very, very focused on as an, as an entire industry is pay attention to the data as to how we'll create those efficiencies and how we believe the number of showings will decrease because you'll be able to do, we do buyer discoveries, right? So our, our, when we sit down and have a conversation, oftentimes those buyer discoveries would be in person. We've already put in place in our team, do your buyer discovery in a video conference. And how will that help you create efficiencies? The consumer's already on a video platform, right? So let's just, let's be able to serve our customers in a different way. I love that. I, I can't wait until we come out of this even more with those cool new uh, steps and guidelines. Makes our life easier and better quality too. So uh, I have a question here I'm going to shift over to. And this one, this one I think is good for all agents, right? And that's this. What advice would you give to real estate agents right now faced with navigating a remote business for the first time? So that kind of goes into the question as to kind of what tools would you recommend? Uh, what mindset should you have? And what are some challenges that you might face? 
I think one of the things that we have to, when we're dealing with the customer, is figure out what tools are they comfortable with. Maybe they're not comfortable with the Zoom. If we're having all the real estate agents coming out saying, how do I use Zoom? How can we expect the customer to do that? So maybe we're using FaceTime. Maybe it's a WhatsApp. What is their, what, what means do they want to communicate on? So we've always talked about that before because following up with a, a customer, some customers like the phone calls, some like text messages, but now I think we're going to have to figure out how they're doing more video and how we can communicate with video. That's true. Very true. What I see as far as those faced with operating right now for the first time remotely is, you know, we can all turn on the technolog technological tools and so many of us have, which is so exciting as we've discussed here today. I see the trap that others will fall into and that's going to be on the culture side. When we first started operating our team in a remote based environment, there were fears of ours is how will we protect the culture? How will we make sure they show up? How will we protect adoption? It was really important though to make sure you have to surround yourself with great partners, number one. All your tools have to give you seamless, seamless kind of fluidity so that everybody can operate. So things like having G Suite, things like using a CRM like Follow Up Boss, which is the best, second to none as far as teams, right? Like we can see and collaborate everything we're doing on follow up boss. We have our leaderboard up every day in our meeting. Like it changes the way we operate. The leaderboard's our a great new addition. Yeah, by the way, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are using it. It's getting a, uh, the agents a little competition, you know, even if we've done a lot of competitions with our team for, you know, a prize at the end, but now we just see a daily like, who's up? Where, where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. Well, all real estate agents love competition. The leaderboard puts that front and center every day. Yeah, we actually have one of our customers, you know, kind of just wrote into me. He's like, Dan, like no one's in the office just now. How do I see what they're doing? <laughs> I'm like, well, it's all tracked right here. So, yeah, it is interesting, like people making that, that mindset shift between like, you know, I'm not in this physical location. Obviously, a lot of us are already used to it, but some people are still making that transition. It's imperative yeah. to partner with strong, strong um, companies and making sure that these are things that Jeff and I don't think about. We don't think about that our CRM is going to give us amazing service for our agents, which in turn improve the customer service for our customers. We don't think about that. Follow-up boss has that handled. We don't think about remote accessibility. Our brokerage is giving us all the tools we need. You know, we don't think about where our training platform is going. You know, we're doing really powerful. Jeff does a lot of green screen training and workplace and we're doing all that. So that's kind of like we wake up and that's already in motion as the foundation. We're looking at how we can continue to improve the customer experience and the agent experience. And you've been head down working on launching a new website and it's just <laughs> it's been crazy. Good stuff. I love that. I love how you you just highlighted those because those are truly important. And the reason we don't worry about those things is because we're we already have those in place and they're strong. That's so strong. all we have to worry about is actually taking actionable steps in the current market that we're in that can help those people. So I love that was a really good answer. I love that. I hope you guys were paying attention on that one. Dan, do you have anything to add? Because I know you have a really good question that's coming up next. Uh, yeah, let's jump into the next one. Um, so I'm just curious, like, sort of what have you been focused on in this quarantine time? So, like, what, what are you doing differently over the last, like, 60 days compared to, you know, just, just before all this happened? Well, you've been doing a lot of interviews. So you, Renee's been doing a ton of interviews and built, but basically doing the same thing, building content. Um, we, we got the new website launched, uh, realtyinorlando.com. We, uh, we're building content on there. We're, when back in 08, I, got, I went full-time in the business, in real estate business in 08. I've been licensed since 99, but, or 07, I, say, I should say. So right when, the, yeah, right when the market was <laughs> drowning. And we, I didn't know because I didn't have that sphere. I wasn't privy to what was going on before. So what did I start doing? I started building content back then. And we've been as soon as this started happening, we just went right back to building content. So we've been building content and we've also been working on our systems and processes. So that's a really big thing. We've been going through follow-up boss, tweaking our action plans, maybe make, trying to make 
things easier for our transaction coordinator, just the, for the customer, basically. Everything going content processes for the customer. So that's really, we've been doing that and pretty much telling all of our agents, same, everybody's telling, contact your people, contact your sphere, get on the phone. Well, being phone calls, yes. <laughs> you have to be on the phone. It's, it's so important to remember this time that we're experiencing right now, it's not like we're not binge watching Netflix, not that there's anything wrong with it. And yes, I watched Tiger King. I did binge watch that one. <laughs> I watched it. All right. I'll admit it. But no, I mean, there's not, there's not a whole lot of like feet back, you know, leaning back and sitting by the pool. We've been working 10, 12 hour days, six, seven days a week, because what we know is those that dig in, those that are really in action without necessarily knowing what the action of that outcome is, that's, there, there's a fear base in that. And I get that. But if you ditch the fear and say, you need to be in action. You need to get up every day. You got to make the phone calls and you got to nurture the content that you stand on a foundation wise for your business. That's what will make sure that you're out ahead of the crowd because the crowd is very likely to thin out because I'm sure Tristan and I'm sure Dan, you're seeing as many of the viewers might be some agents are operating in fear because this is scary and that results in them putting their head in the sand. And that's, that's, that's not a good place to be in your business. You got to get up and give yourself the grace to say, I might not have all the answers, but I'd rather be in action and make a mistake to learn from that than to just dig my head in the sand and let someone else pass me by who's in action, finding out the answers. Yeah, that's it. The agents are waiting for it to go back to the way it was. It's not going back to the way it is. It, it's changed. It already has changed and you need to get on board and start working with the changes and do going into action, just like Renee said. And so it, with, in regards to that, where, where should agents be focusing on business wise? And I know that doesn't have too much to do with remote working remotely, but no, it, it kind of fits into what you just said. And I, I want to know what you guys are doing. What is that? A hundred percent right now for us is phone calls and content. Like we, as Jeff mentioned, we built a business on SEO. Whether you have a business that's SEO based for your, your online content or not, content is king. Content is a big umbrella. It can be, are you passionate about writing? Write an article. Are you, write a blog. Are you passionate about, are you comfortable putting yourself in a camera? If you're not comfortable putting yourself in a camera, now's the time Everybody needs to be in front of a camera. If you're not using video in your business plan, get over it. Everyone knows what you look like. Put your authentic self out there with all the mistakes because it's okay. You're going to trip up your words. So content has been king. Um, and then really just looking at, you know, the way you navigated 08 and 09 and 2010 is you have to just put yourself out there. You have to make sure that you're in action and always calling people to just say, how are you? How are you doing? How's your family? Are you safe? Do you have enough supplies? Is there something that you need that I might be a connector for that I know somebody who can provide that service to you? Or do you have a service you're providing that I might know somebody who has a need that I can make that connection? That's all the phone calls we're making. We're not calling anybody about real estate the last 45, 60 days. We're calling to say, are you okay? That's it. Are you okay? No real estate talk unless they ask. And yeah, they the all ask. The conversation <laughs> turns to real estate uh, many of the times, but it's them asking us, uh, well, what are you seeing in the market? How is this happening? They're, they're, you are a wealth of information for that, but let them ask you. You, you don't force it on, the, on your customers at this point. That's all the basics, just really, really building and protecting the foundation of your business. And that is what will serve you well forever. As long as you want your career to be, if you always focus on those basics in your foundation, your career will always serve you well. All right, so let's shift into lead conversion and really using your tools. Like, let's just go into follow up boss. All right, so uh, we as a team are still using follow up boss in a similar fashion where we go in, we check out what the last lead logins were, who's checking out more property, right? Uh, what leads we're getting from Wilopo or Facebook, wherever. And we go through, and that's the same, but our messaging has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And so how has your messaging changed? What's the, 
what's that approach that you've changed? Messaging as far as when we're reaching out? Yeah, like uh, conversation-wise, like if I'm reaching out yeah. to Jeff and be like, hey, Jeff, blah, 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 or texting, right? How does that look? Is it still the same or did you tweak it a little bit? Well, I would say that there's two portions of that question. Number one would be any incoming lead source we have, right? Like we bring in a lot of business from our own website, realtyorlando.com. That's a customer knocking on the door saying, I am asking to be contacted. So at the top of the hour, I think we mentioned we have a first call agent. Our first call agent makes that first call for our team to get the basics. Um, verifying phone number, verifying email address, verifying some general timeline related information and just some of their top preferences. Those types of customers have raised their hand and asked to be contacted. Um, in the beginning, so mid-March, some of the agents said, I don't know, should we be doing that? I said, well, we're deemed essential in our area. We still have people who need to transact. I mean, there's been doctors and medical um, community staff members who've actually needed to move they need to move. And so we have to make those calls. That messaging was more real estate related. Everyone else in our database, though, who wasn't necessarily raising their hand in that moment and asking for a call, it was well-being check. How are you? Are you safe? Do you have enough supplies? Is there something I can be a connector for in your life? We, um, being in Orlando, we have so many people from all over the country, all over the world. So it's a lot of what's happening in your area a lot of talk about what's happening there, what's happening here. And for those are for the existing people that we've been talking to. And like Renee said, the new people that are coming in, there's not, there doesn't really need to be that much of a change because they are seeking real estate. So it's more going right into the real estate rather than, you know, you might have a quick conversation about what's happening here and, and how the market has changed. But the main conversation is what, what are your goals? How are we going to accomplish them? I love that. I, Good. I think Tristan, it's really just so important to continue to reiterate that agents ditch the fear, right? Just ditch it, get it. Don't allow the fear in the driver's seat is operate. Make sure you're paying attention to all the CDC guidelines. Make sure you're paying attention to your local and you know, your all of the government guidance that's coming out, but get into action and don't allow fear in the driver's seat. Cause the thing that we need to remember is there's quite a few agents who are not leaving fear in the driver's seat. They're kicking it out. And they're in action. You know, so we see it with agents all the time. We have agents on our team that are, they are transacting so frequently right now. But I will share with you that those agents transacting, they're on the phone all day, every day. They're, I mean, they're busting their tail, okay. working harder than ever because it is a time that you have to dig in hard, roll up the sleeves and get in there. It's, it's not so much the fun part we're in right now. It's in the part where, you know, transactions, closing a transaction might take 20 times as more work than it did three months ago because you really got to be the strength and glue to come from grace and empathy and get that those those parties to the closing table. I could tell you without look, looking at our deals, which agents are doing well by looking at the leaderboard. The agents that are in action right now, the agents that are calling, emailing, texting, writing notes and they're they're setting appointments. They're the ones that are going out and they're 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 doing it. They're, it's a direct correlation. They, yeah, it's a one hundred percent. So those agents, they're, they're transacting and they're transacting on a high level. That, we, that process of actually working and staying busy and calling, that in itself is a remedy for, for fear, right? Because it puts you into action. So I love that, that you guys said that it's a clear distinction too. And they motivate those around them too. 100%. percent well, when you sit in silence, the fear creeps in more. You know, if you're watching the news, the fear creeps in more. And I'm not going to say don't watch the news. We have to stay informed. But we, quite frankly, don't watch news very often. We watch it very strategically at certain times of the week, and we really just try to avoid it. What I have found that has lowered the fear is, like you said, Tristan, is to get on the phone and to collaborate. You know, even lab coat agents, right? Let's talk about the community you've built. If you're not involved in a community like lab code agents, and you're not truly in the trenches, reaching out to every agent that we have at our fingertips to collaborate and say, what are you experiencing in your marketplace? You're missing an opportunity to calm fear and to get connected with others to see what they're experiencing, which then you can bring to your customer base when they say, what's going on in the marketplace? Well, I've spoke to Tristan from Lab Code Agents and, and Dan from Follow Up Boss and all the agents I spoke to in the last 24 hours from the various markets and here's what they're experiencing. 
You know, yeah, another thing that, I just want to touch so, on, one sure. more thing, is to talk to your vendor partners. Because, like, when I call Dan and I say, hey, Dan, what's the temperature read you're picking up from all the agents that you work with around the United States? I'm going to lean on Dan from Fallow Boss to share that with us. We, we check, uh, check with our lenders and our title companies. What are you getting from the agents and the other brokerages? I want to know what they're experiencing because then our anxiety comes down and we can serve our customers differently. Yeah, I think being able to use those those things that are out there, just realizing, hey, oh, wow, that's right. You, you said something that hasn't been brought up, which is look at lab code agents and say, well, there are 120,000 agents around the world. I can kind of gauge the temperature as to what's happening and what business is happening just from going in and checking that out. So that's a, that's a very good point that you made, Renee. I hadn't even made that point myself. So thank you for that. If you don't have a morning huddle, go into lab code agents and post a post in the morning with a question you have in mind. Hey guys, what, what, what has been one lesson you learned over the last 45 days? Take that and use that for your day or take a, what are you experiencing in your marketplace? How's it shifted in 24 hours, seven days, right? Now, every phone call you make, you can say, my community of lab code agents has shared with me this. Right, Lab Code Agents is a great group of 120 agents from around the U.S. Right and beyond, so that then becomes your community that you can leverage. There's so many opportunities for that. Yeah, great one, great one. All right, uh, Dan, you've got a question coming up, buddy. Shoot. All right. Um, yeah, I think this is one I put down. So I'm just curious, like, how you you all approach like working together? How do you guys make it work so well? Um, you know, you're obviously on video and interviews a lot. I remember meeting up with you, both of you in New York earlier this year and you're, you're very much on the same page. Um, and then you're also probably like the last 60 days, like, you know, stuck together at home almost, right? So I'm just kind of curious what, uh, what tips you would have. You know, I know there's a lot of couples that work together in real estate. So I'm just, I'm just curious what you guys are doing that's uh, working. Not much different for us. Um, we from the moment we met, we uh, we pretty much have been inseparable. <laughs> so we just had our 17th anniversary the other day. Um, a little bit of, I, I'd say now we're, we're really dividing and conquering. So we're each picking our lane on what we need to do for the day and performing on that. So the, uh, for couples, it's, uh, I, it's hard because it, it's been so easy for us to do this and it really hasn't been a change but i can see how we we've talked about this and how it might not work for some people being at home all the time we get asked that question all the time and you know we've been married 17 years as of last week and and we've been together almost 20 shortly here and we've worked together very closely like shoulder to shoulder like this on um, the better part of those 20 years it works for us i don't know why i mean it kind of comes down to marital advices. I don't have any, just love each other real hard on the tough days. And that's the same thing at work is like, there's tough days, there's fun days. And we just have, you know, we, we navigate it together. Um, we work this close all the time, even in our brick and mortar office we have in Orlando, our desks are like face to face. So that's it's, cool. it's no yeah. issue for us to be in quarantine. It's kind of just another day from our business for our life. It's Kind of like okay now i get it there's so many challenges going on and i don't mean to make light of it but for us here in this household we've been blessed to be healthy we just keep navigating together just teaching all algebra and history and we're doing so well that <laughs> well, <laughs> they don't come to me because they, then my kids will tell me if i have to go to mom for algebra that just means google <laughs> i love that well guys uh that's a good answer where do you think the the puck is headed in the next few months uh, what do you think we should be focused on as agents so that we can be ahead of that curve anything on that you want me to go? Me go well tristan you're asking as agents um, as agents we should all be focused on if you're just now adopting new technologies um, if you're a listing agent you just started 360 or matterports whatever it is you've just started keep it in place. Don't release it, right? So the way we serve our sellers, the way we provide stellar service to them, make that the new standard. I am so much on a soapbox about that because I hope, I hope, hope, hope as an industry that we say the sellers deserve it. So keep those things in motion and provide every ounce of uh, marketing technology that you can. 
and then as far as you know the agents where they're going i think they're the agents there's a lot of hope for the agents to realize the power in collaborating authentically with all agents across the board and that we're stronger like i don't believe in secret sauce we're an open book by you know we know philanthropically when we give to a local charity you know the world kind of gives back to you right I realized when you do that in your business when you give 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 somehow it's a miracle you end up receiving more it's this crazy it's actually true so I think as an industry we'll see a different connection among brokerage to brokerage collaborative effort to collaborative effort because it will change the way the entire world thinks of realtors when we elevate ourselves and we come together like that. I love that. It's a good answer. Dan, anything you want to add to, to my question? Where do you think, because you, you have an audience too with, with follow up boss, right? You guys have what thousands and thousands of users. How are you seeing that they should be focused on you? You work with the top agents in, in the world, dude. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of the stuff that, Renee already covered. Um, I, I think we just see them taking a lot of action. And I think it's kind of true at any time, right? The people taking action are the people that didn't get results. And, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I did talk to a team the other day. I think this is probably the minority of our customers and where they're, they're sort of their agents are just sort of doing a bit more to head, you know, head in the sand for now. And then, you know, seeing what happens. And we already know that like real estate is this game where like the actions you take today are going to pay off months down the track, right? You're going to transact later. So, you know, I, I think like it kind of, it is going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy for some people uh, that, you know, their results are going to suffer even as things come back. And so I think, yeah, just taking massive amounts of action. Um, it's like everyone should be doing really like, I mean, I think the alternative is how like you guys talked about, you get into that fear mindset of like, oh, I can't control my world around me. But you know, the reality is you can, there's a lot of things you can control. And maybe as well, like one thing, like I would say like outside of that is like, there's your business life and maybe you can't hundred percent control, obviously what's happening right now, but you could take control of other things like your health or like your personal relationships. So like, I, I always like that advice of just look for maybe one thing outside your business that you could be improving right now, even if your business is like, you know, in a bit of a uh, slump because of everything that's going on. So. Yeah. One of the things uh, we, we always talk about too, is when, the, like Dan said, the stuff you do now, everything that you're doing now is going to be, it's going to pay off in three months. But if you're not doing anything now in three months, it's going to be that much harder. And we always have a saying between Renee and I, when an agent comes to us and says, I need a sale now, you know, give me a now lead or I need a sale. It's really hard to sell a house when you have to sell a house. Sell a house. That's yeah. the hardest time to sell a house. When you're comfortable and you're confident, then it's easy to sell, you know, or to or help people acquire a home. I should That's say right. not sell it, but just you're able to do your job so much. The pressure's not there. That's true. That's true. And I think that's the part that a lot of agents are finally figuring out right now. They're like, oh, I should have been doing this a while ago. Right. And yeah. we haven't even seen the results of what, what our country has done. I mean, the, the, the unemployment, the lack of work for, for everything else, everything, all of that, we're going to see all the effects three months, six months from now. Yeah. And if you're not working right now on the things you're supposed to be working, like taking action on these things, you're going to be behind by the time you know it and it, it'll be too late, right? You won't be able to make it. Uh, there's a question, anonymous attendee, Dan, it's for you. Do you use follow up boss as your CRM and is it connected to your website? I guess that was for Jeff and Renee. Jeff, Renee. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. We have been using follow up boss for almost five years, four, four and a half years, and it's connected to all incoming sources we have, right? Yeah. That's and we have, we have a couple of websites where they actually do have CRMs, but we're using follow up boss ease of use, uh, great for teams, for teams and collaborate between teams, second to none. We've been extremely happy with follow up boss. All right. If you, there's one feature that you like about follow up boss that helps you run your business better. What would that be? Smart list. 
SmartList. SmartList is a one-touch access point to, um, you can create a list of people, think of reverse prospecting, right? Which we do a lot on our team and we reverse prospect our database. So you can create a subset with a, a number of filters and then you can create a one-touch access to that filtered search. So for example, when we're in morning huddle with our team, someone says, hey, I have a listing coming up, 300,000 in this area. Who do you know? Our agents will go in and with one touch, they'll have a smart list and it'll say, here's this group that's already pre-filtered. You might have a different answer, but I like smart Yeah, I, I, smart lists are awesome. I really think it's the ease of use, ultimately. It's laid out on one page. It's super easy to see everything at a glance, where a lot of the other CRMs, they, they've just been clunky That's where you're true. searching for things all the time. So I think that the just the one glance and seeing what's going on is, is huge for us. The interface is yeah, and it's, It makes the adoption very easy. Yeah, I love We're big that. fans. Thank you, follow up. Boss. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, it's been great having you guys. I just looked at your website as well. Uh, I mean, you drop it in the chat. Like that's a great picture of <laughs> of you both and the team there. Uh, we just launched in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, the, our custom website with REW, which is realtyinorlando.com, and talk about great partners too. I mean, it's been great. We launched the site and. We're, we're on a roll. We're grateful for all of our amazing partners. Dan, your whole team is just been, you know, it's great. Another thing about Follow Boss, Follow Boss listens. So if we have as a user suggestions or questions, like they're on it and they get into implementation mode, which that's everything. I, I'm grateful for that. I love that. You guys became the partners for the Orlando Magic. Reminds me of what uh, Gary Ashton and the other guy's name is, is uh, leaving my head, but that's along the same paths as what they've done. So uh, what made you shift to that and how hard was that to be got to do that? Well, it's his yeah. BHAG, his <laughs> BHAG that came to fruition in 2019. It took about three, <laughs> three to four years for it to actually come to fruition. So it, um, we, we had looked at it before. It, just, it never made sense. And we finally, the planets aligned and, we, we went for it and it's been an amazing journey so far where we're hoping the NBA starts playing some games again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about fear base, wake up one day on March 12th and have, find out that one of your largest investments you've made in your business just shut down. <laughs> that's, that's keep very plug, funny. Keep plugging along, keep positive mindset and just know that uh, we're all going to get through this. Yeah, that's true. And guys, for those of you who don't know, BHAG, it's a very big, hairy, audacious goal. And it reminds me of Jim Collins from Built to Last or from Good to Great. I don't remember which one it was from, but uh, yeah, I love that. So BHAG, great job, guys. Jeff, Renee, what areas do you work in besides Orlando, just in case people listening to want to send you referrals? Well, we're in all of Central Florida. Specifically, we look a lot in Southwest Orlando, um, Kissimmee area. We a large portion of our business are the Orlando area vacation homes that are rented out um, by for Airbnb and VRBO. Yeah. Uh, but we cover our team is amazing, and they cover all of Central Florida. So thank you for asking. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I love always sending business to people that participate in this group. Uh, Dan, anything you want to add that I may have missed? No, I think just, yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, really appreciate uh, both of you as clients and just, yeah, the collaboration and feedback and, you know, kind words as well. Yeah, I love that. Guys, I put up a link there for Follow Up Boss. If you have any questions about it, take a look at it. I did post it up into the Facebook group as well and into the chat box here. Any parting words, Jeff, Renee? You know, I think that agents just have to remember you have tools. This is, we're dealing in a new environment, but you already have the, even if you don't have the XP world or the, that, the Keller Williams, you, you still have your phone. You can still FaceTime the people. You, you have tools. It's so much easier now than it was in 2008. You know, you can take a video, you can send it right away. You can put it on YouTube, send it. We used to have to take you know, we film on a camera, then you upload it to the computer, then you, it was a pain in the neck. You can do it in a snap right now. So you have the tools, the technology, go out and use them. I love that. Great addition. Renee, anything? Two words, consistency, good habits, the answers to all your questions. 
<laughs> I love that. That's so good. And what's best Thanks, for the customer? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. This is great. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, guys. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate this. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.